Welcome to this video on color matching with the spectrophotometer. The first step is to locate the paint code which for this vehicle is located inside the driver's door jam. Then we're going to go to the computer and input that information starting off with a work order number which is optional and then entering the paint code and then the vehicle make. Please note, however, this video does not intend to show you how to use every type of software available. That will be dependent on the paint manufacturer that you're using. However, the steps will be very similar between this and other pieces of software out there. Once the information is entered, we create a file, which is then synchronized with the camera. With this particular unit, this can actually be done on the camera itself, but due to the small size of the screen on the camera, it's much easier to do this on the computer and then synchronize the file to the camera. Once it is synchronized and loaded on the camera, then we can proceed with the next steps in this process. As we can see on the screen, it is currently synchronized as of now. Now that the synchronization is complete, we need to make sure that the color camera or spectrophotometer is properly calibrated before we take our reading. By clicking on the bottom corner which shows the two colors, we can check and here it shows us that it does need to be recalibrated. Follow the directions on your camera to make sure that the calibration process is completed correctly. So this one requires us to take a reading of a white sample and then a light green sample. If you do not calibrate your camera, either your camera will not work or you could get very poor readings which will create a poor color match. A very important topic we need to discuss before taking a measurement is refraction, which is how light changes direction when traveling through certain densities of certain objects, such as pure light traveling through a glass prism, which then breaks the light into its different properties, all the different colors of the visible light spectrum. When we have a vehicle whose service is not pure and flat, uh, that is not polished, then what happens is the light can actually refract through these deep scratches, which will allow some of the uh, colors to refract through these deep scratches and reflect back into the spectrophotometer. When this happens, there may be higher concentrations of certain light uh, reflecting back than what should reflect back, which can create a very poor reading with the spectrophotometer. Here's a good example. When we take these two arrows that are the same direction, and as we see through this glass full of water, the light's now refracting, it's changing direction, which makes the arrow appear to point the wrong way. The reality is if we polish the surface, we will get the right amount and color of light reflected back to the color camera to give us a true reading. Your color matching should be done at a spot very close to where you'll be painting. In this case, I'm painting the rear door, so I'm going to color match to the quarter panel. Always inspect your panel to make sure that it's free of any defects or damage. Even if the panel looks to be in very good condition, you should do some sanding, such as what I'm doing here with some three and then 5,000 grit sandpaper to remove any of those minor scratches. If the defects are deeper than what the three or 5,000 can remove, then go to a coarser grit sandpaper and sand as necessary. You wanna get the surface as close to perfect as possible because of the refraction we talked about earlier. If there are any micro scratches in the panel or deep core scratches, then that could cause the light from the camera to refract, giving it a poor color reading. And this is probably the single most common cause of poor color matching with the color camera, not following all the proper steps in the polishing process. Here I'm using a three-step polishing product, so I'm making sure that I'm using all three steps correctly, making sure that between each step I clean the panel with the appropriate cleaners. If you do not clean the panels properly and do not sand properly and do not polish properly, you will not get a good color match with the spectrophotometer or not as good of a color match as you would hope for. With this process, do not uh, rush yourself. Take your time to do this very thoroughly. Now, if you watch in these videos right now, I have sped them up because this isn't a polishing video, um, but it is definitely much quicker than what it would normally take. As I go through the polishing and finish with this third step, I will give the panel one final inspection and clean, making sure that I am 100% happy with that panel and that there are zero chances of there being any defects in the area I wish to take a reading from before I finish. If not, go back and repeat the polishing and sanding if necessary to make sure that you get that proper reading. Thus, I cannot stress the importance of the sanding and processing step. That's why this video spent so much time noting this for color matching with the spectrophotometer.
I now place the spectrophotometer on the clean panel and select my work order. Once it's selected there, I push that plus button in the top left and those three dots let me know that the spectrophotometer is flat against the panel. I push a button on the side, boom, takes a reading. Then it asks me to rotate the uh, tool 90 degrees and take a second reading. So it wants to do two readings from different angles to make sure it gets a good match. Once we're done, we'll hook it back up to the computer, resynchronize, and what it will do is it will take the readings that we just took, load it into the computer, and then once it's loaded into the computer and synchronized, then we can select our color. So there we see it pop up on the screen with a picture of what the color looks like. And we see it's a white metallic color, or in this case, a white pearl. So once we select on that uh, color in the bottom right corner, there's the magnifying glass, we will search for good matches. And as we perform our search in here, the computer is going to look for matches that work with our color. Um, one thing that I'm doing differently in this stage is I'm going solid color in the top right corner because this is a three-stage color rather than a typical two-stage. I just want to match a solid white color that will match my ground coat, and it may not actually be for this formula, and this will give me the best ground coat color. However, if I go back and select my color, and I don't choose a solid, I just go with it as a typical three-stage, it's going to show me these different matches with this bar graph. The further to the right the bar in that bar graph is, the better the match. Typically, between the two black lines with this system means it's blendable, and if it's on the right side of that line, then it means it could even be a possible butt match. As we see in this example, we have a formula which we can then mix to go do a spray out card. Once the color is selected, and I've selected the best one in this case, I've proceeded to do a spray out card so I can check the color against the vehicle. Once I'm happy with that, then I can proceed with the painting process. If I'm not happy with the color match, I can redo the process, select a different alternate, um, or I could go in and check other spray out cards that may be existing. One really unique thing about this system is I can actually do what's called a correction step, meaning once I've sprayed my spray out card, I can do another camera reading on it, and this software will, uh, will actually retint the color as needed for me. That's a little bit of an advanced process that can be taught uh, by your instructor or by your paint supplier. Once it's done, you can prepare the vehicle. Once the vehicle is prepared, then we can get it masked and paint the vehicle. And then, of course, appreciate our work once it's finished. And that's how we do our color matching with the spectrophotometer. Thank you for watching this video.